Hey guys, Kyle R1945 from the uh, SaddleHunter.com forum and uh, it's been a minute since I've done a video and I wanted to check back in. Uh, I've been post posting a handful of videos on the JX3 hybrid from JX3 Outdoors, Mr. John. Um, he and I talk pretty regularly. I've been a big fan of the, uh, of the saddle since he came out with it um, and he and I have talked quite a bit about uh, some ways to improve it and just general what's going on in life and, and hunting stories and all of that and he's he's become somebody that uh, I really enjoy talking to and so I feel um, a little obligated to, to help him out and, and put some information out there because I think I think the saddle is a great fit uh, for a lot of folks and I think the videos that I've put out already kind of show some of those features <coughs> but now that I've had uh, I've had it for at least a year now um, I guess I got the original one in November of last season. Um, spent quite a bit of time in it and working with some other friends who have them as well, um, kind of trying to dial it in a little bit. Uh, this, what you see here, is actually a um, prototype. Uh, we've kind of been jokingly calling it on the forum the skinny hybrid. Um, uh, you can look back at the review thread that I have on there that's 40 something pages long now. And I really had one singular complaint about it, and it's just being kind of a narrow person um, walking through thick cover. The seat was so wide um, for me personally that uh, walking through it tended to catch on things. Now he's got the the the, uh, the quiet fabric on there. It didn't make noise. It was just a it was just a comfort thing, and it was it was keeping me from using it on hunts in really really thick cover. And so. Really, it's about the only complaint I can come up with. I knew it was sort of personal to me, um, being a narrower person. Um, but we started to suspect as well, some people having trouble with shooting um, may have been shorter folks, <coughs> excuse me, um, where that wide seat, even though they were, they were wider, it, it puts the starting point of, the, uh, of the, the harness a little wider. And so trying to get over the top of that if you're a shorter person <clears throat> potentially could be a problem. So we, uh, we talked it through and, and John actually put together a couple prototypes with a, an 18 inch wide seat instead of the 20 inch wide seat. I'll start this by saying if you're 200 pounds plus, um, you're probably fine in the, uh, in the regular width seat, but we, we started to look at it and see maybe there's a need for a little narrower. one. So I'm putting, the, putting it through the paces this season but there's also some other features with this that, uh, that he's added that I'll go over as well as some of the things that I've kind of dialed in myself. Um, you've seen a couple of my videos maybe, if you can't go back and look, if you haven't seen them yet, uh, where I was using it without a pack. Um, that works great uh, if you're not filming. Uh, I do my best to try to bring the film gear with me in the woods. Sometimes it's hard. Uh, I walk a lot. Um, I, I very rarely set up. Um, it's another one of my common themes is I'm usually scouting way more than I'm hunting um, and crazy as it sounds I'd rather carry this thing all day knowing that if I'm going to get up in a tree for an hour or two I'm going to be really comfortable um, but one of the things about filming is that just becomes difficult to carry that gear so I'm going to show you how I got that set up now. <clears throat> all right um, for those of you who were asking about what to do with um, Dano's squirrel steps, as you can see, I kept these with a night eyes gear tie just looped right on the, the right belt, and so they sit on my hip right there. They're quiet, they don't make any noise, they don't bang around. Um, but some guys were asking how to silence them. Um, show you how I've done it. I've been using the, uh, the vet tape, just the cheap camo form, the camo wrap tape. And these are now, I've logged 11 hunts, so we're going to call it about 40 to 50 hours or so in the stand. And as you can see, um, it's just starting to wear out on the edges there, a little bit next to each other, but still fairly quiet. Uh, so I'll probably rewrap them here in the next uh, couple of hunts. But there you go, to get a dozen or so hunts out of them for maybe $2 in tape. 
Um, so I keep that ring of steps. That's all I use with the hybrid. I don't use a platform with it. Um, it's just something that I don't really see the need for. Um, so on the original hybrid, this is one of the first things I added was this uh, binocular pouch on the right side. And when you're sitting in the saddle, <coughs> that harness is up and down here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I keep that open and that's where I keep foam, snacks, water, whatever the case may be. Right there on my right side, I shoot off my left side. It's never in the way, even if I come over the top. Um, so that's always been there. So in this pouch, I've got folding soft, which I just started carrying. I'm trying to get, get used to that. I see a need for it here and there. Um, titanium bolts or titanium rods and the tree hopper drill, the mini with the folding handle. Great piece of kit, love it. Um, can't imagine drilling a tree with anything else besides this. Good job, Mark. And my tether, which is the Oplarks with the Beal Jammy and the, uh, the DMM ripstop, the shock absorber that I added to it. Um, creates a pretty long connection. I know a lot of folks don't like that, especially with a regular saddle. You want a little lower hookup, but the hybrid doesn't matter. It's up considerably higher. So that's all right there, ready to go. When I walk up to the tree, um, that stuff, I can deploy it easily without taking anything off and I'm ready to go. So not much has changed there. Um, but like I was saying, the film gear was starting to be a problem. Um, or I needed a packer, it wasn't a problem. Um, and so I used the, uh, John came up with a little pack system here that I've been using and it seems to work pretty good. So another feature that he's added, you can see right here, um, he's added two additional spikes or forks on the fork plate that was originally there. So your fork adjusts in and out. But those are nice as you turn on the fork and you get right to the end of where that fork's gonna come out the tree, these would kind of catch and take over and it allows you to keep tighter to the tree and keep that rotation going. Uh, they also help a lot for packing um, by keeping these straps right here. Um, I've been looking at the out on a limb, uh, the, the rotating sticks that that uh, Matt has come up with, and this helps them pack really good, which I'll show you guys in another video, I'm sure. So, um, taking those down. Um, Doyle's bow hoist still here. Um, and as you can see, there's a little pack here. Now, the modification that's been made to it is this little, this little open pouch here. You take it or leave it, you know, it's kind of a, it's a neat little place to store stuff. But this bag um, goes on the, the hook up here that normally would hook the seat up. Um, there's a little loop that John has sewn into that bag. And then down here in each corner are the little uh, quick plastic clip uh, D-shaped loops that can go on the saddle. And just a piece of shock cord there and there. And what that does is when you're sitting in the hybrid, you've got this bag on your back. It keeps it tight to the frame. One of the problems is as you're reclining, that bag would want to rotate back if it was just hanging up here, but this keeps it tight on either side. So um, as you're climbing, if you were to have the seat down or while you're sitting and you haven't yet gotten into it or you want to leave it back there, um, that's a great way to do it. But you can reach right here behind your hip and unclip those. Um, and now the bottom of the bag is free. Um, and sitting in the hybrid, uh, if you flip your shoulder straps back, I can turn around, grab these loops that he's sewn on here on either side and pull this bag off the frame and come around my side and now I've got it in front of me. Um, it's a real simple pack, no backpack straps or anything on it. Um, I have added, this is my camera pouch. Um, I either carry this on my waist or on this bag. It works great here because it's all in one place. Um, again, I don't have a ton of accessories, but this is my, uh, this is my new camera arm base, which again, I probably need to do a video showing that. This is maybe the fourth hunt. I've, I've used it about four hunts and it seems to be working pretty good. So we'll talk about that later. Um, so I've got that, my two piece arm and my fluid head. So that really was the reason for kind of wanting this bag. Um, and then in here I've got my my camera. Um, 
and the very zoom, all that's in this pouch. I've got my extra phone charger, charging brick, license, everything kind of goes in there. Um, in this small bag though, spare headlight, knife, uh, Leatherman, got some Benadryl, Leave, Tylenol, Cold and Sinus, stuff like that. It's everything in there. Everything out of the big bag. And then best feature here, um, the other issue was water. How to carry a, a bladder. I tried putting it in between the frame and the mesh. That didn't work. It would get hot from your back or if it was cold, you know, freeze you. Um, just wasn't quite enough room for a, a, a bladder in there. Had ways to attach a water bottle. It just it never really worked very good. So um, there's just a Velcro slot in the back of here and two liter, uh, well, let me go ahead and take it off the right way. Two liter water bag works great. You can clip that over your shoulder um, and then just stuff this right behind you while you're sitting and it's there. Or if you pull the whole bag around you, now it's on the tree. You can have the hose sitting right there. It's nice and easy. Um, so typically what I've been doing as I get in the tree, um, I take the bag off once I'm set up. I set my bow hook, set the bag on my bow hook, um, go ahead and get my camera arm set on the tree, and then inside the bag I've got another hook that I'll hang the pack on, screw that one in, drop the bag on the hook, pull my bow up, put it on, and I'm ready to hunt. Um, I, I will typically leave the bag on the tree because it's so small, um, I can get it out of my way. Excuse me, let me turn that off. Um, but it's just as easy to go ahead and hang it back on the back and then again those little shock cord loops loop them in there click it and now the bag stays tight to the frame it's not flopping around it's not hanging out getting in the way um, so this is a pretty cool little system i'm not sure when or if john's going to offer this as a something that comes standard on the hybrid you just pay a few bucks more or if he's going to do it kind of as options but this little bag works great. I DIY'd one myself. Um, I just took a small, cheap Allen um, uh, regular backpack and cut the straps off and basically came up with the same design. But this little bag with the built-in water bladder holder, everything's already done. It's a quick, easy way to, to get things in there. It's the perfect size. If you're not filming, man, you can fit pretty much anything you need. Um, the best part about it, which kind of got it apart here now, but you should still be able to see. Um, with that folded up, you're looking at about eight inches deep from front to back there. And then now the whole thing is only 18 inches wide. All the sides are covered in that micro suede uh, material. So nothing makes any noise. And then the other thing that he's added are load lifters, which can come off of the saddle if you don't want them, if you're not using them. They're really easy. They attach right there, pull them up. That's been a huge help um, with a little extra weight. I haven't carried a deer out yet in it um, with, with the load lifters. And then these straps set up are, got the two uh, vertical straps here and then a horizontal strap. They've got the G hooks, loosen all that up. Um, I have keep game bag in here, got that ready to go. Put my game bag in inside these straps, strap everything down pull it all up. I now have this bag to contend with. Well, I got news for you guys. If I got to walk a mile holding a five pound bag with a hundred pounds of deer on my back, I'm in a good mood. So um, I, I think that'll work just fine. The other option is pull this up and hang the bag on the back, strap it up, and you're good to go with the deer inside. So it's a really versatile system. Um, I've grown to love it. I have hunted exclusively out of the hybrid as far as saddles go. I've done quite a bit of ground hunting as well this, this year. And that's what I love about the, the hybrid is being able to use it on the ground as well. Uh, I'm having to get used to the idea of if I want to be elevated a little bit while on the ground tying to a tree, but John and I have talked through and that's a big reason why he put these additional forks on here is it allows you to get in tight to that tree and almost sit sideways and use the tree to, to give you some cover from from deer or whatnot. Um, sitting on the ground completely flat obviously is great and extremely comfortable in it. Um, you can shoot a bow that way, but I found it works great with crossbow or rifle, shotgun, because um, you have a really low profile, you're all the way down. But anyways guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you got any questions, put them in the, uh, the comments there below. I'll try to answer for you. And I'll post this up on the forum, hopefully, uh, hopefully help some of you guys out. Have a good one.